Hello everyone, this is the SMUF team and I'm about to present you the second part of a tutorial on how to create a basic application for Smart TV. Let us remind that we're about to create a weather application that will run on multiple platforms and we're going to do that using SMUF SDK. Assuming that you have completed all the requirements from the previous part, we are now ready to create our weather app. The first step we need to go through is to get the SMUF token for our application. This is necessary for SMUF to work. To get the token, we need to log in to SMUF dashboard with our newly created account. Having logged in, the first page shows a list of our applications. Notice that we see the application with the name we defined when creating our new account. We click on the applications icon and we will proceed to the application's information page. Here we can update our application, change name, description or icon. We can also manage the application's token. Let's click on the copy button to display the token. A dialog appears and we can now copy the application's token. The next step is to create the basic application. We will use SMUF command line tools to create a new project named Weather. We open a terminal and we navigate to the directory where we would like to place our project. And here we run the following command. SMUF create weather where weather is the name of our application. After that we will be asked a series of questions regarding our application such as application name, we're going to put weather, for the name spaces are allowed but we try to keep it short. Application ID is a unique ID for our project. Prefer all lowercase ASCII letters, with the first one being a top-level domain name, such as uh, com, edu, etc., or one of the English two-letter codes. Try to enter something unique here, based on your company's or organization's name. Description is a simple text description of the application. Screen dimension is practically what it states. There are two choices here. We can navigate between the two using our keyboard arrows. In our case we select the first one. Token is our application's token, and this is the point where we paste the one we got from SMUF dashboard in the previous step. After a while, the project will be created. This will create a new directory named Weather. We can see it by navigating to our selected folder. There it is. The name of the directory is the one that we specified after the smuff create command. Inside the directory there is a readme md file and the source folder containing the source code for our application. Here's what each file stands for. Index.html is the HTML file that is used for starting our application. Smuff.js is the SMUF SDK library. Main CSS is the style sheet file for styling our application. Let's open index.html in any browser to test our application. This is what we get. Let us note at this point that 
although the applications we create with Smuff are designed to run on TVs, Smuff simulates smart TV environment and allows us to run the applications in our browser. As we can see on screen, all that the application does for now is to display the application's name and description. It's the description that we defined during project creation. It also displays whether Smuff was successfully initialized. Don't worry, in the next step we will add some logic. Let's now go on and open index.html with an editor. You can see it right here. We will review the most important parts of it. Let's have a look at the head part of the file. The title of the page has been set to the title of the application automatically for us. It also uses main CSS and includes Smuff SDK. We don't have to create any of these files. They are already there for us. The meta tag is used to fix a couple of issues in some of the supported platforms. The body part contains some placeholders and Smuff's initialization logic. There's a header and two paragraph elements. The header contains the name of the application, while the first paragraph element contains its description. Both values were filled based on the input that we provided during project creation. The second paragraph, the one with ID status, has no text at all. We're going to use it for updating Smuff status. Finally, there's a JavaScript code that handles Smuff initialization and provides some really simple logic that updates the status to the second paragraph element. Smuff ready allows us to define a callback to be called when Smuff has finished with initialization. The function provided prints a message to the console and sets the text of the second paragraph element to Smuff initialized. We can try replacing this text and refreshing index.html on our browser. When Smuff finishes with initialization, we will see the message that we provided. Now, Smuff init triggers Smuff initialization. It accepts only one argument, which is our application's token. Right now, the token has been automatically filled in based on the token that we provided during project creation. Before proceeding to the actual coding of the application, we will create the basic layout. The layout must contain a loading view and a view that displays a five-day forecast for a city. As we want to display weather information from multiple cities, we will create a template that will be later filled in by our code. So we'll replace the header and paragraphs with the following code. We basically defined two parent div elements, one with ID loading and another one with ID weather. The one with ID loading will be used to provide a loading animation while we load weather data from Open Weather Map. The one with ID weather will display the main layout. It contains three children divs. The first one will display the name of the current city. The second one displays the navigation arrows and five columns for the weather.
The last one is a simple footer that displays the weather data source. Now, as you might have noticed, there are two divs containing navigation icons. Plus, we will additionally be needing some icons for the weather data display. To make things easier for you, we've prepared an icon pack that you can download. You will find the link at the sources below. Here's a downloaded file. We unzip the file and we open the unzipped folder to find a folder named image. We place directory image under directory source in our project. And we're ready to go. Let's now move on to the style sheets. We will split our CSS code into three different files in order to keep things organized. Main CSS contains basic layout definitions. We need to replace the current contents of main CSS with the following code, which you will find in the resources below. In fact, from now on we will be using code that is available to you from the provided sources. We also need to create a file named grid CSS under source styles. This file will handle the application's layout. Let's insert the following contents to grid CSS. Finally, we need to create a file named Spinner CSS under Source Styles. This file contains CSS animations for the loading page. We insert the following code to Spinner CSS. We now need to go back to index.html and edit the head section so that it includes the style sheets that we added before. We edit the head section as follows. We are now ready to proceed with coding the logic of our application. Now, since we're going to load data from a remote HTTP server, we need a function that performs the HTTP request. We will use the following function that retrieves data from the given URL and passes this data to a callback. We go to our index.html over here and right above the smuffready function, we place function get. Function get receives as parameters a given URL and a callback. It creates a new HTTP request. When the ready state property changes, this function is called this function over here and checks whether the request has finished and the response is ready. If so, the data from the given URL will be retrieved and passed to this callback. 
This function will allow us to get data from our weather data source. Open Weather Maps API allows querying weather info by providing latitude and longitude. We will use an array of objects containing the geographic coordinates of three cities. We will also need a pointer to the current city we will display. We add the following code at the top of our JavaScript code in index.html. Here we see the variable cities within which we store an array of objects, one for each city. Each object contains two properties, the latitude and longitude of the corresponding city. Variable current city is used as our pointer. We are now ready to get weather data and display them. The logic is pretty simple. We query Open Weather Map API for current latitude and longitude using the get function that we implemented earlier. When the result is ready, we parse the results as a JSON document and repopulate each day's placeholder. Let us insert the following function to our JavaScript code right after the get function. This is function load weather. Notice that in the beginning of the function there is this variable called API key. This is where we store our open weather map API key, the one that we obtained earlier on in video 1. Var city holds the value of the current city, while in the following two lines what we do is hide weather info until data is loaded and at the same time we show the animation, the loading animation. In variable URL we create the string that will be passed later on as a parameter into our get function. Function get then will fetch for us the weather data for the given city. And in the end of the load weather function we hide the animation and show the retrieved data. Finally, we want to load weather as soon as SMOF has finished initializing. We suggest running your code inside the SMOF initialization callback. SMOF ensures that it calls this callback after every required initialization for the underlying Smart TV platform has completed. All we need to do is to call the load weather function. Let's update SMUF ready callback to call it. Let's check what we've done so far. Let us save our index.html and load it in our browser. After a short loading, we will see the weather forecast for the first location. That's it for now. In the next step, we will use SMUF to build navigation using the remote control. Again, this is the SMUF team. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you on our next video.